Imagine being charged with intimidation after completing an assignment to the best of your ability. This is the image of Joe Corlett, an Oakland University student charged with intimidation after completing a journaling assignment. According to the Daily Tribune, on February 15, 2012, Corlett has been suspended for three semesters and barred from campus. After researching, it is my responsibility to reinforce the Bill of Rights, especially as I am concerned with the violations for college students and university ones at that. Joe Corlett, age 56, has been charged with intimidation or the intentional behavior that would cause a person of ordinary sensibilities fear of injury or harm for three specific journal entries. It is important that we understand how the First and Second Amendments have been violated, especially within these three journal entries. To start, what was the first journal entry and how has it caused so much controversy? According to the Detroit Free Press on February 15, 2012, the university now holds Corlett's journal. Corlett wrote in it, I quote, Then there's Miss English 380. She walks in, and I say to myself, Christ, I'll never learn a thing. Tall, blonde, stack, skirt, heels, fingernails, smart, articulate, smile. I'm toast, but I'll stay. This journal assignment was free form and had absolutely no restrictions. It is unacceptable that Mitzelfield is charging him with intimidation. According to NBC News, Corlett has wrote four essays that are sexually charged. He received an A on all four assignments. How does this coincide with regards to the essay and the journal assignment? In an interview with Charlie Langton, CBS local public radio host, on February 16, 2012, Corlett said, I quote, it was never about her body. That was just a small part of it. I used nine words to describe her. Two were smart and articulate. Corlett wonders how the university can disrespect the right to free speech so blatantly. If you can't explore and write crazy things in an academic environment, how are you supposed to learn? In the same interview, Brian Vincent, Corlett's lawyer, told the university that if they do not drop charges, he will charge the university, citing First Amendment rights. Now this brings me to my second point, Corlett's approval of the Second Amendment. Now how has Diane Mitzelfeld's class related to the issue with the Second Amendment rights, or the right to bear arms? She wrote an email to the university <coughs> asking the university to take action against Corlett. In the email she wrote, I quote, due to our recent discovery that Joseph Corlett has made his gun obsession obvious to other colleagues and managed to make himself known in negative ways to many other females on campus, I am feeling increasingly uncomfortable and unsafe. He has also written to the school paper about his right to carry concealed weapons. Now, I cannot feel safe knowing he may have one at any time. Obviously, this professor is afraid, but fear cannot justify this claim. According to ABC News on February 16, 2012, Corlett told the press that he's been married to his wife, Lynn, for 30 years. He has no intention of having sexual relations with any other woman but her. He also has never brought a weapon to campus, nor will he ever. Finally, communication between Corlett and other female students should not instill fear on campus. Why can't a 56-year-old ask the same question as a 20-year-old? According to the Daily Tribune, Corlett describes his third entry. He forgot an assignment, called a bunch of kids late at night, and finally, a girl answered one of his panicked voicemails. She said to him, You know, Joe, it's not acceptable for us to communicate any other way besides email. Now, I personally, in Dr. Wick's class, have called another student late at night for clarification about an email. It's necessary, and it's perfectly unfair to be charged for something like that. Regardless, according to FERPA, the Federal Education Rights and Privacy Act, Joe Corlett's journal entries have been illegally exposed to the press. This is federal law. Now, to wrap up, we've identified these three journal entries. The U.S. has disobeyed an academic, by, has been disobeyed 
by an academic institution. We must provide a safe environment to express our ideas and freedoms. If Joe Corlett is punished, we limit our freedoms. The American value calls for people, especially Joe Corlett, to take action when our freedoms are at risk. Should Joe Corlett sue, he is right, and our constitutional rights will be protected.